When a Nobel Prize-winning physicist questions our current grasp of the universe, it signals that a critical moment in astronomy has arrived. Yet, Adam Rees isn't alone in his confusion. The James Webb Telescope is uncovering new cosmic structures that sharply conflict with established cosmological theories. How is it that structures once deemed impossible are now being confirmed? What do these surprising discoveries mean for future research? Have our previous theories finally reached their limits? Many seemingly simple questions can have complex answers. The question of how fast the universe is expanding while appearing straightforward is central to a research puzzle that has confounded experts for years. It is now well established that the universe has been expanding since its inception about 13.8 billion years ago. Consequently, galaxies are moving away from each other at a rate proportional to their distance. For instance, if Galaxy A is twice as far from Earth as Galaxy B, its separation from us is also increasing twice as fast. Edwin Hubble was among the first to identify this relationship. To determine the rate at which two galaxies are receding from each other, you need to know their distance, and a constant that scales this distance. This is where the Hubble constant comes into play. This is where things become quite perplexing. There has been a long-standing debate among experts about the true value of the Hubble constant. Previous measurements have yielded conflicting results, meaning the value depends on the method used. One approach involves the cosmic microwave background radiation, a nearly uniform remnant from the early universe that supports the Big Bang theory. Using this method, the expansion rate is about 67 km per second per megaparsec. To put this in perspective, one megaparsec equals 3.2 and 6 million light years, with a light year being roughly 9.46 trillion kilometers. On the other hand, when using sea feeds, stars with periodic brightness fluctuations, to measure distances, the expansion rate jumps to 73 km per second per megaparsec. This suggests that the universe appears to be expanding faster locally, within about 3 billion light years, than on a larger scale, which is counterintuitive. This discrepancy is known as the Hubble tension, and no researcher has yet provided a satisfactory explanation for this anomaly. The Enigma in the Sights of the James Webb Telescope some scientists had previously hoped that the mystery surrounding the expansion rate might be due to a measurement error from the Hubble Space Telescope. Adam Rees also sought to determine if there were any errors in the Hubble data. Awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2011 with other researchers, Rees and his team had previously discovered the universe's accelerating expansion. They used the James Webb Telescope to investigate the causes behind the Hubble expansion and to identify any potential errors in Hubble's measurements. But how is the expansion of the cosmos determined in detail? The so-called cosmic distance ladder is employed for this purpose. Each stage of this ladder relies on the previous one, so any measurement error can propagate through all stages. Cepheids, which are reliable up to a certain distance, become less effective as their light mixes with that of other stars, making accurate measurements challenging. Fortunately, Webb is 100 times more powerful than its predecessor, Hubble, enabling experts to probe deeper and with greater detail into the universe's distant realms. Published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters, the new study presented a rather sobering update. The JWST, covering the entire area previously observed by Hubble, found no measurement errors, leaving the issue of Hubble tension unresolved. Adam Rees offers a brief yet profound explanation. We might have misunderstood the universe itself. Additionally, it's crucial to explore whether we've missed something in our previous research and how we can reconcile the universe's origins with its current state. This potential resolution challenges Einstein's theory of gravity. However, Rees and his team are not alone in addressing the perplexing Hubble tension. 
researchers from the universities of Bonn and St. Andrews have proposed a new possible explanation. They suggest that Earth is situated within a bubble-shaped region of space with relatively low matter density. Surrounding this cosmic bubble, matter density is higher, and the gravitational forces from this matter pull galaxies towards the bubble's edge. Consequently, galaxies are receding from us faster than expected. A seemingly plausible explanation, yet it leads to another research conundrum. The standard model doesn't account for such bubbles or underdensities. They shouldn't actually exist. Instead, matter is expected to be evenly distributed in space. At its core, the standard model is based on Albert Einstein's theory of gravity, but it's possible that gravity behaves differently in reality. Scientists have thus turned to a modified theory of gravity proposed by Israeli physicist Mordechai Milgram in the 1980s. Known as modified Newtonian dynamics, this theory has yet to gain mainstream acceptance despite its ability to predict such bubbles accurately. If Milgram's theory accurately describes gravitational behavior, it could resolve the ongoing debates about Hubble tension. In this context, there would indeed be only one constant for the universe's expansion. The observed discrepancies might stem from irregularities in matter distribution. The future will reveal how well this new approach is accepted and confirmed, but examining the cosmic past highlights how much remains to be understood. Sometimes a single value is enough to leave even the most seasoned astronomers astounded. Specifically, 1432 is the record redshift of the galaxy JDs, GS, Z14-0, which means this gravitationally bound group of stars existed just 290 million years after the Big Bang. This early galaxy also raises pressing questions. How could it have been so bright and massive at that time? Where did the necessary matter come from? Detected with Webb's near-infrared camera, the structure likely took 100 million years to grow to its observed size. Ultimately, this galactic infant contradicts almost all theoretical models and computer simulations of the early cosmos. In fact, the galaxy is in notable company. The six galaxies the James Webb Telescope added to the star maps at the beginning of 2023 were also far more massive than they should be. Despite existing when the universe was only 500 to 700 million years old, these structures already resembled today's Milky Way. Since this is not possible according to conventional cosmology, the galaxy earned the nickname Universe Breakers among experts. Instead of unexpected baby galaxies, researchers observed impressive objects all containing over 10 billion solar masses of stars, with one even possibly having over 100 billion solar masses. The pressing question now is how this was even possible. Even if just one of these galaxies is real, it would challenge our understanding of cosmology to its core. To account for these structures, the density of matter in the early universe would need to have been up to five times greater than current models suggest. Alternatively, these galaxies might have evolved in a manner completely unknown to us. What do such discoveries imply in a broader context? Does the history of the early universe, and possibly the Big Bang theory itself, need to be completely rewritten? Regarding new mysteries and old telescopes, our current understanding of galaxy evolution is as follows. Initially, dark matter collapsed into enormous clumps known as halos within the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang. The gravity of these halos then attracted normal matter, leading to the formation of stars and galaxies. However, this process was gradual matter would have slowly aggregated, leading to the formation of increasingly larger galaxies over time. Within this framework, the galaxies discovered by Webb are therefore deemed impossible. Additionally, our previous theories do not predict nearly as many dark matter halos in the early universe 
as would be necessary to account for the formation of such large structures. Some experts, including Julian Munoz from the University of Texas at Austin, are hesitant to completely discard the established research consensus of the past. Muno suggests that we might need to interpret Webb's data with caution. He points out that if there were truly 10 times more dark matter structures in the early cosmos than previously assumed, we would expect to see 10 times more galaxies in Webb's images. However, this should also be reflected in the Hubble data, which is not the case. Munoz and his team counted the number of galaxies Hubble observed across a range of brightness levels. They then tried to incorporate more dark matter halos into their model of the early universe. The issue? The halos needed to align with Webb's data disrupted the information collected by Hubble. So, which telescope should we trust? Webb is undeniably more powerful than Hubble, but it only began its scientific operations in 2022. Hubble, on the other hand, has been observing the universe for nearly 35 years. According to Munoz, the sheer volume of Hubble's data currently outweighs its quality, making it seem more reliable at this point. Therefore, it might be wiser to seek alternative explanations for these early galaxies that don't require a complete overhaul of our understanding of cosmic evolution. And now, you have the opportunity to help shape the future of our channel. Press the thumbs up and subscribe now to never miss an exciting new video from us again.